come from the book of James. <laughs> you don't have to stand. Beginning at verse 13 through 18. Who is a wise man endowed with knowledge among you? Let him show of a good conversation his works with weakness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and evil works. But the wisdom that is from above is pure, and then is peaceable and gentle, and easily to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Jesus. Gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, I stand before your people. Lord, I do pray, Lord God, that you would... that's not of you, that's in me, Lord Jesus. Set me down and let the Holy Spirit reign, Lord God. Yes. Speak to me, through me, and for me, Lord God. You are the only one that can speak to a multitude of people, Lord God, and say something different to each one of them. Yes. Impart in their hearts and their minds, Lord God, a word that will feed and break the yokes of those that are bound. God, we give you glory, we'll give you the praise, and we'll forever give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look to your neighbor and say, don't assume it. Don't, don't twist it. Don't twist it. <laughs> Get it right. Get it right. Get it right. <laughs> If someone were to ask you the question, what is wisdom? How would you reply? Would you say that you know? Because you know right from wrong according to yourself? Or instead because you know what separates right from wrong? Wisdom, sapience, sagility is the ability to think and act using knowledge, experience, common sense, and insight. It would be rather easy to misperceive what wisdom is. It would be easy when there's a temptation just to twist it a little bit and to adjust it to your own way of thinking. Uh, when, when in fact it becomes our own personal identifying stamp of our behavior. And then there's many of us that merely like the way words are phrased. It has a philosophical ring to it. But a ring is a sound and not a meaning to just what it's saying. Uh, James, James is beseeching uh, you and I to employ wisdom. And a teeny weeny bit of wisdom would lead you and it me to accept the word of God, not to add to it, nor take from it, well, well. but just as it is. Uh -huh. And if you can't seem to get it right, don't assume that you have and don't twist it. Yeah. <laughs> there are some who even have the audacity to twist the word of God to their own personal situations and their predicaments. Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to conforming to God's word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it says I'm bad all by myself. Mm -hmm. A word that can keep us. A word that can comfort us. A word that will guide us or sting our hearts. Mm -hmm. Our desire should be Pursuit of truth through wisdom. Uh, the, 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 the kind that would 
help us to exhibit the fruits. Not the part of our journey, but throughout our entire journey. In this world in which we dwell, in which we worship, in which we can learn, in which we can teach and live and love, and live in the peace and joy of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, God will provide our need. It's easy to twist wisdom. Just as some of us. Some of us know it all in the world. Uh -oh. Especially in the church. Uh, but oh, I'm not talking about this church. No, not our church. No, it couldn't happen here, could it? Amen. Uh, uh, it's hard to get to the place where you think you know more than your leaders. Uh, it's, it's strange to think that you know better than your pastor. It's difficult to think that you know more than your boss or your spouse when you are a know-it-all all to yourself. We can all think back on a time when we thought we knew more than our parents. James, 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 just ask James. James was one of the writers who didn't hold back. He put enough needles in this thing that we call the Epistle of James that it'll prick the conscience of every dull, defeated, and de degenerated Christian in the world. His book, his book is designed to exhort and encourage, to challenge and to convict, to rebuke and to revive. Yeah. But in these verses yeah. of our text, James begins to describe a practical holiness. Yeah, all right, man. A, a, a wisdom for all ages which yeah. drives the believers towards the goal of faith mm -hmm. a faith that works yeah. mm -hmm. so what is wisdom if anyone should display wisdom it might have been James mm -hmm. he should have displayed it <coughs> but James didn't have it so it's no surprise that James don't want to get it twisted again. Before a while he did, as the half-brother of Jesus Christ and growing up in the same household, he did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. James fought against it. Even a faintest effort of trying to believe, he just wasn't having it. It couldn't be. Totally impossible. But in James' limited sense of wisdom, he didn't realize that his, 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 his arms was just too short to box with God, that, that his punch wasn't powerful enough and his chin wasn't strong enough. Amen. Right. And, and imagine with me some of the thoughts that might have been occurring in James' mind when hearing the whispers of his mother, Mary and Joseph, talk about baby Jesus. Mm. All right. A little brother. James just couldn't grasp that this Messiah title as actual truth until the resurrection of Jesus Christ, his brother. It was only then when James appeared before his brother, Jesus, the wounded, the resurrected Christ came to accept and became a strong believer and a leader in the Jerusalem church. Yeah. Uh, in, in verse 13, James poses a rhetorical question. Who is a wise man endowed with knowledge among you? And before you answer or raise your hand, let me tell you that the term of wise. <laughs> Everybody's wise to their own ability, to their own level of intelligence. And that's why they say, sometimes if you just keep quiet, won't nobody know but you. <laughs> a wise man. It comes from a Greek word, sophos, which means teacher. A teacher was considered and thought to be a religious leader, skilled in spiritual knowledge, 
He was a rabbinical priest, the one who was entrusted with preserving and interpreting, interpreting, interpreting the true word of God. Not twisted, not assuming that he knew, but the word of God as it was written, how it was written. Who then are the bearers of wisdom in our church? Who would you think would be the ones who would study the word diligently? Who would take their spiritual leadership role seriously and, and seek to preserve the, God's word for the next generation? Seriously. Mm -hmm. And to seek God's word for the next generation. But James says, don't twist it. There is more to it than that. James teaches us that if you want to be a teacher, you don't just have to know some things. You, 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 you have to do some things. Uh, uh, Brother Reed, is that right? You, you, you know that you got to do some things. James teaches us that wisdom is measured more by the deeds in the community than the degrees on our wall. It's not a matter of just acquiring the knowledge. You have to learn how to apply that knowledge in your daily life, throughout your daily life. All right. All right. James gives us three lessons in these verses of our text. First, James is teaching us Practice what you preach. Yes. 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 There ought to be a display of morality and purity in your life. A wise man knows how to conduct himself like a Christian. The man who professes to be a Christian must learn how to take the facts of the words and apply them to his work. Uh, this is necessary in any field or profession. A Christian man ought to demonstrate the character of Christ. That's right. That's right. What a good lawyer. What is it if he can't use the law and know how to apply it to win a case? Uh, uh, what good is a doctor who knows all about medicine? He can give you a diagnosis, but he can't give you the correct medicine to save somebody's life. Mm -hmm. what, what, what good is a, a, a Christian who knows the word of God, but does not live according to the will of God? A person who knows the word of God inside and out and backwards is nothing more than a smarty pants. Uh, you know what I was talking about. I know it all. All right. <laughs> But a believer who knows the word and lives the word is truly wise. Amen. Amen. I would think, of course I'm not wise, but I would think that I would be afraid to take the word of God and twist it to whatever I want it to be. I, 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 James says that that if a believer claims to be wise, let him show out of good conversation his work with meekness of wisdom. Let him or her be like a, a sister Brantley with the meekness of wisdom. I, I, I like the way that Jesus put it in his Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, not Reverend Gibson, but Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever hear these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built the house upon a rock and the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat up on the house but the rock stood. All right, all right. So my brothers and my sisters, don't assume, but practice what you preach. Secondly, James tells us, James tells us that there's no phony baloney. Mm. 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 
no phony baloney. Come on, it's true. It's true. One of the things that that's irritating, agitating is to see some phony baloney in your church. Come on, come on. <laughs> to see that 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 fervent Christian <laughs> sitting next to me on a pew praising God like there is no tomorrow. Shouting hallelujah, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus. All oh, praise due to God. Ah, 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 ah. All right. Well, I, 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 I went outside, and that same one, what? Come on, we I, I don't want to gossip, but they had a drink in their hand. They had a cigarette in the other. No phony baloney. You, you, you all know who the great pretender was. I'll come back to him in a minute. But you, you see, you can go through all the motions of being a Christian. One can be faithful in worship and faithful to the missions and, and in Sunday school. You can have all a, a hard woman smile like Sister Latrice. You know, she can smile. She got a nice smile. And, and, and she can talk that talk. And you know how to walk circumspectly in the world as good Christians should. Not knowing anyone to witness your participating in any outside of the will of God. Yeah. Phony baloney. Mm. <laughs> you can be and appear to be the epitome of perfection. While all the time you are inwardly seeping wow. with jealousy, mm -hmm. disappointment, mm -hmm. and laboring in resentment. Mm -hmm. Uh, you see, church, James is talking about I'm not inhabiting the character of a great pretender. Mm. You, 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 you know he met and deceived Eve in the garden. Uh, he walked and tempted Jesus in the wilderness. Mm. So you're not excluded. Mm. And he even visit our churches. He knows how to act just like one of us. He raises his hand in a praise and he shouts hallelujah every now and then. And you know he, 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 he still roams from here to there trying to buy whoever he can. You know it. You can see him that he's a deceitful nature that even fools himself to thinking he's holy. Uh, <laughs> Anyone can pretend to be spiritual when he's really nothing more than a wise guy. Yes. 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 A real wise man knows Christianity is no game. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. It is no game of show and tell. He, he, he doesn't wear Christianity like a cloak to hide his true feelings. You may even know somebody like that. You may even know someone who comes or goes to church faithfully, participates in the ministry, and gives a generosity to the working of the growing of God's kingdom. He appears to be wise in the way of God, but something is wrong. Something is wrong, awfully wrong, awfully wrong. As soon as he gets home, he's complaining about something or to someone. He's stirring up some kind of trouble. He's burning up the phone line. James say this wisdom descendeth not from above, but it is earthly, it's sensual, it's devilish. For where envy and strife abides, there is confusion in every evil work. There is never an occasion when envy and strife becomes appropriate behavior. For a Christian. Mm -hmm. Never. Uh, yes, there is such a thing as a righteous indignation. But in the same sentence that we are told to be angry, we are told not to sin. In verse 16, James instructs us that envy and the strife, dislike and hatred. Bitter envy translates into, in, in, in Greek into Eptarian, which means it's a zealous jealousy. It's a Satan's trap. It has the ability to lure at the unsuspecting Christian yes. into a tainted uh, a, a, a territory where yeah. strife, it sucks him in, it sucks him down, it webs him in, he can't get out. He's trapped. 
And only the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. can set that trap free. Mm -hmm. And it becomes our duty as followers of Jesus to reject any bitter envy. It doesn't have a taste. And subsequent strength, it fabricates. It doesn't wear good. It doesn't wear good. It puts that, you know, we all had that one. We put that, that thing in us. You know when we was in the street? <laughs> I could never understand why I was walking with my hand behind <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about. You cannot wear it. It doesn't wear good. But you got to replace it with some love and humility, which is better than good. It's the Christian way. We can't pretend our way to the throne room of God. We can't pretend to get there. True wisdom desires that you and I replicate in the life of the believer. Envy and selfish ambitions can only produce disorder, confusion, and evil. A wise man does not seek glory for gain. Instead, he is gracious and in giving. God needs a few real Christians who desire not only to be wise, but also to live wisely. So James says, practice what you preach. He said, no phony belong. But there's one more point that James makes to us. Promote peace. James, James is telling us he's trying to implore us to, 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 to use wisdom. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then it's peaceable, it's gentle, and it's easy to entreat. It's full of mercy and good fruit without partiality, without hypocrisy. What James is saying is that when peace is sown, it brings forth a harvest of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Last night, I had the opportunity to witness a young man speak some wisdom. And he spoke that there was a transformation going on with him. The closer he got to God, the further his friends got away from him. It wasn't so much of what he was saying, but it was what he was doing. It was that error about him that he was confused at one morning. Matter of fact, he said he was even bothered by it at one moment. But he became a man of peace. All right. All right. I, I don't want to beat up on nobody. But it said early in this epistle that it was like a needle in a haystack. That when you reach to lift someone up, you might get pricked along the way. Jesus. We have to go through that to grow. Sometimes we think too much of ourselves. We're too much man, uh, we're too much woman, when in fact we're not enough of either. Uh, I'm not forgiving, I'm not forgetting. Why? Because it's hard to forgive self without Christian wisdom. I like the phrase that James used in verse 17, without partiality, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Did you catch that? He said without partiality and without hypocrisy. Uh-huh, did you hear that? Yeah. As a result, you got this guilt to deal with that doesn't allow you to be the Christian that God would want you to be. 
It doesn't show. God doesn't show us no favoritism. Our God is the same today as he was yesterday, the same to you and the same to me. But I still believe that he loves me a little bit more. Is that all right? There is something more about a Christian that demonstrates favoritism and partiality. I, I'm getting ready to come on in here now. But in fact, James speaks on promoting peace. How do we overcome uh, being grumpy with a spouse but being happy with our dogs and our boys? Uh, being grumpy on the job but happy to happy are being grumpy with the members of the church but crappy with our pastor being grumpy at home with the kids while giggling in the missions meeting uh, James says in, 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 in this chapter that in his letter a double minded man is unstable in all ways a, a, a person who is unstable cannot be consistent can't be stuck there can't be dependent but is shaky He's unsound, insecure. So you see the suit time, the true sign of a stable mind is someone who entreats everybody, everyone, and has the same demeanor every day. He's an everyday man. He's, he has, oh my God, he has it every day. Yes. Mm -hmm. God is so good to us, children. Yes, he is. God yes, he is. is so very good to us. He is the same. That's what we got to get to. James says in the first chapter. You see, the true sign of a stable mind is someone who treats everyone the same. Has the same demeanor every day. I know some folks like that. He is the same with his neighbor as he is with his family. He's the same with his barber as he is with his children. He, he, he is the same with his pastor as he is with them caveman invitees to his home. <laughs> Sisters are the same at the beauty parlor with that giving the yabbity in the church meetings. A peaceful person is impartial. He's impartial. Mm -hmm. I know that the world is a crazy place. Mm -hmm. And you know it too. Mm -hmm. But what we need is that peace that James speaks of. Mm -hmm. We need to learn how to promote that peace. Mm -hmm. We need that peace in the kitchen at home. We need that peace in our family rooms, a peace in a love room, peace on the job, and peace even in a Oh my God, a traffic jam. I'm always unpeaceful here. I'm always unpeaceful here. But peace in our church meeting, peace in our walking, peace in our talk. James says we ought to be easy and treated. And simply means that we should be easy to persuade, easy to calm down, and easy to make compliant. And another word for it is submission. When we submit ourselves one to another, we work together as one unit. As with the one God that we serve, who is the same every day. I know that sometimes things get a bit too much that toys with our emotions and stretches us to our last nerves. It pushes all the wrong buttons. But Jesus said to us, peace I leave with you. And it's my peace that I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So who are you going to believe? James eventually came to realize that his half-brother was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They all had been waiting for. Mm -hmm. And he lived the rest of his life believing in the teachings of Jesus Christ. Yes, in the end, he got it untwisted. Mm -hmm. He got it straight. And finally helping us to get it right. Love the comforter who never leaves you. 
And if you desire to get it right, <coughs> the doors of the church are open. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah.